What do you think then uh, grappling with these quantum concepts do to one's brain or the way they look at the world? I mean, we're not saying now that quantum is necessarily, you know, the, the uh, proving QED to spirituality, but just sort of in a practical sense, be, by taking these ideas on and, and examining them and holding them and figuring them out or whatever, what do you think that does to the brain and the person's outlook or their psychology or something? Well, I do th what I do think is that <clears throat> it, 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 it's, it's, very, it's very tricky. If quantum mechanics, in, in my opinion, if quantum mechanics is used to kind of push spirituality too far, goes overboard, then, then I think that there's a reaction, a legitimate reaction against it, which is harmful both to the spirit of science and to spirituality. Um, the flakiness factor gets too high, what you call the cheese factor, and people run away from it. I mean, it's, it's insustainable in the end. Um, the proof just won't be there. On the other hand, there is something I believe that th that's very subtle and important if it is approached properly. And that is that prior to quantum mechanics, the, um, the completely classical, purely mechanistic view of the world, which basically says, and it is, this, is a, this, is, uh, this is a very uh, hard-edged, what I'm going to say now is a hard-edged, just purely philosophical concept, and its implications may not be immediately evident because it just sounds so dry. But the root expression of the mechanistic worldview was simply that everything that happens in the world, including everything that happens to human beings, has a prior physical cause. That's all. I mean, it sounds very, it sounds like, well, how can that be so powerful? But basically, the implication of that statement, which arose during the Enlightenment, is that every action that a human being takes, every event that occurs in life, can be explained in principle ultimately in the way that every action in a game of billiards can be explained, or let's not say a game of billiards, but rather a complicated billiard table that's set into motion by just, uh, you know, uh, the balls are all bumped at the beginning and they all start moving around and every single motion subsequent to that has absolutely no meaning. It's just the inevitable consequence of the initial m motion of the balls. And so anything that you do in your life that you think is purposeful, intentional, meaningful, all of those thoughts about intention and purpose and meaning, it's all a complete illusion. In fact, even the concept of illusion is an illusion. Th because nothing's happening. It's all just a dead game. It's not even a game. It's just a dead system unwinding as a consequence of those initial physical motions. And that physical understanding is unbelievably powerful, not just as a philosophical concept that was introduced in the Enlightenment. That principle actually is what allows every single piece of equipment that's in this room to have come into existence. It's why all the lights work. It's why this camera works, why the microphone works. It's why the chairs that we're sitting on, the ho this hotel room, many of us are on medications of one sort or another why all those medications work. And we could go down the list of everything in this conference and almost every single working object in our uh, system of life is utterly dependent and came into existence as a consequence of the power and genius of that proposition. And so even people who, who don't believe it or understand it have been 
from their toes to the top of their heads completely and thoroughly soaked and immersed and infected by that. And so without realizing it, let me overstate this proposition a little bit. Even people who absolutely insist that they don't believe it are utter believers in the mechanistic view of life. It's impossible not to have been completely and totally infected by it. it dominates everything. And it has stripped us of almost any vivid sense that the world and the universe is actually alive. It's like a poison that has just seeped into everything. Even people who insist they don't believe it are affected by it. So is quantum the antidote? Maybe it is. It's the one, in my opinion, it is the one scientific discovery ever I don't think anybody can name a single rigorous scientific discovery that stands in rigorous opposition to that proposition that everything in the universe can be explained by a prior cause. That's why Einstein hated quantum mechanics. I mean, he said exactly that if quantum mechanics is true, then there is no more science. Einstein is quoted on the What the Bleep website as kind of a in, a, in a, in a supportive way, as though he would be a supporter of What the Bleep. He wouldn't be, and he hated quantum mechanics because he thought quantum mechanics had a profound religious implication, not in a specific way, but just that there was something anti-science about quantum mechanics. And he spent basically... He wasted the, the, the majority of his scientific life trying to prove that quantum mechanics was wrong. I mean, solid quantum, quantum mechanics. He, he wasted the rest of his life trying to prove the, that the quantum mechanics that Professor Albert was explaining, the most hard-nosed, dry quantum mechanics he hated. He was trying to prove that that quantum mechanics was wrong because he found it so offensive. And... E, that's the kind of quantum mechanics that I do, and I agree with Einstein that there is contained, even in that kind of rigorous quantum mechanics, the first glimmer of hope that the universe is in fact, that there's, well, that there's something outside the universe that's not just a mechanical system. So from that perspective, it doesn't require building a gigantic, overreaching system of spirituality on quantum mechanics. One can stick with it as it is and build very cautiously and slowly. It may take 200 years of cautious building before a genuinely solid new vision is constructed but it will be something really solid. Now, uh, what about the fact that mystics will go into their mystical states and they all seem to report that basically they're in a heightened awareness or whatever they call it, and they say everything is one, where they perceive the universe as one. This seems to be able to perceive the superposition. So... You know, what does this have to do with mysticism? I mean, you've heard, uh, you know, all, all is one. And mystic will go into a, a, a meditative state and, and emerge from it with the, the impression that, that all is one. I, I mean, I'm inclined to, to be a little bit uh, uh, sort of épaté les bourgeoisie here and say, well, it has nothing to do with it whatsoever. It's two completely unrelated phenomena. Well, maybe it isn't. Maybe there is some kind of a connection. But really, it, at this point, if you're going to be hard-nosed and rigorous about it, you have to say, well, it's just an analogy. We don't really know whether there's any connection whatsoever. It's a, it's a compelling analogy, and it's definitely the case that the mystical spirit, the, the, the 
impulse to pursue mystery is absolutely aroused by quantum mechanical events. But whether they're really talking about the same thing, to be absolutely fair, as much as I personally would love the answer to be yes, they are the same thing. I, I really would. But to be absolutely fair, we really can't say that. Because again, quantum mechanics doesn't give away the game so easily. It does, it, it's not giving you those kinds of answers. Maybe it has something to do with mysticism. Maybe it has absolutely nothing to do with mysticism. And I was saying, uh, uh, you know, in another comment that I made, I said that, that uh, you know, if you go up to quantum mechanics and try to get it to give you that answer, it's going to get angry at you because it, that's, it absolutely can't, doesn't do that, and it's very power. And the ultimate mysteriousness of it is, is uh, bound up inextricably with this kind of boundary that it sets up. It, it sets up this boundary that says, look, the world is unbelievably mysterious. You think you understand it? <laughs> you ain't even got close to it. So don't think that you can just slap some familiar category, some favorite familiar category mysticism or religion or whatever, and make it conform to it, because it isn't going to conform to that either. It's going to be just as upsetting to the mystic as to the materialist. If people are very comfortable with the idea of saying, oh, quantum mechanics violates materialism, it violates determinism, and it does, but it doesn't give a heck of a lot of solace to mystics either. It shouldn't. It shouldn't give solace to anybody unless you're the kind of person who absolutely loves genuine mystery.